Okay, so here's one more update. Now I've reconnected in uh, DVD-ROM drive, as you can see there, DVD plus RW. All right, so I had finally found a website that actually had the drivers for this motherboard. And this motherboard here is like the OG of the uh, P5LD2s because there's the P5LD2VM-V uh, dash SE so there's multiple ver multiple varieties or, or versions of this motherboard um, so going to the Asus website trying to find the drivers and BIOS for this motherboard was not easy but I finally found them and I finally found updated drivers as well uh, I mean uh, BIOS as well as the drivers and so I learned that one of the BIOS updates actually solves the problem with the high speed 2.0 being disabled when uh, when the motherboard is defaulted you know put into a system defaults so that's a fix and um, I think maybe there's a couple other things that are addressed like uh, updated processors and probably getting the full 4 gigs of RAM that's supposed to be available to this motherboard because as of right now it only supports 3 gigs um, so yeah, back to the drawing board here, going to try and um, do what I did before, which is uh, get the BIOS to boot to this, but instead of booting to it specifically, uh, the, I, what I realized, found out rather, is that when you go into Easy Flash for doing the BIOS, when I originally read up on it, it had stated that the the machine only supported uh, fl flashing via a floppy via, via floppy drive, which of course you know no floppy here, which means I would have had to connect a floppy some other way, um, which is really not possible with the way this is set up right now with all the things that are connected to it. I'd actually put more than likely had to pull out the entire. Um, motherboard and put it into like an empty case or on a box or something but I decided just out of curiosity to check the flash uh, excuse me I forgot what I was trying to how, how I was trying to say that um, the easy flash what it supported whether it was easy flash 2 or easy flash 1 because easy flash 2 will let you uh, flash the system with a flash drive, a thumb drive, you know? Uh, but what, So when I went into that setting, it did in fact look for both a floppy and a CD. Now it did say CD, and this here is a DVD because it's all that I have, but I'm figuring that maybe a CD and a DVD-ROM isn't going to matter that much, and I certainly hope so because I only had blank DVDs and a DVD-ROM. So now I'm going to attempt to flash the BIOS to the newest updated BIOS available for this motherboard using that instead of a floppy and uh, hopefully that works out well um, I usually get a little nervous flashing BIOS to a motherboard because it is you know possible to uh, mess your board up but I had looked into it and made sure that you know I was getting the right BIOS version and all the things and I, I did find the very very specific motherboard this time as opposed to the other versions so this should theoretically just go smoothly and uh, let's hope that I can get this to update and you know with a thumbs up let's just hope that that happens I'll uh, be back alright so now I am taking out the old Pentium 4 and replacing it with an E6700 um, Originally, what I had picked up was an E7600 because I had misread the uh, manual in the uh, CPU list, a uh, supported list. But uh, right now it has a 3 gig Pentium 4 processor in it and um, only 1 gig of DDR2 RAM. And quite honestly, running Windows 10 on that was surprisingly okay. Like, it wasn't a great experience, but this 3 gig Pentium 4 was able to do it with 1 gig of RAM. I was able to install 
Firefox and Google Chrome. I was able to download programs and install them. I haven't actually like utilized them very much. Uh, I imagine at some point it would really like bog down and get unusable, but for the most part, it was relatively usable. So that was surprising. So anyhow, this is the CPU bracket for the Intel. And as I had mentioned once before, in order to get to the CPU, you know, you're going to remove this and this flips up, but this gets in the way. You can't actually lift up the, uh, the lid all the way. So I figured since I was taking it out, I would show um, how it goes in and how it comes out. So this here is the CPU. It's upside down, obviously. But these clips are, you know, um, good for AMD chips, the uh, FM2, uh, AM3, AM2, you know, it, it, it works with those stock uh, brackets on AMD motherboards, which is why it needs that bracket. These here. These these little plastic things go inside here uh, like, like that and, and you push them and you know you push them all the way in to lock it into place now one thing I had noticed is that they're kind of difficult to get back out again and not terrible, but not that easy to get back out again. And one more thing that's important to note is that these little these little clips and these little like plugs right in here that that um, plastic topper like fed into those basically will lock. They have those like little plastic, um, like teeth, sort of like what's on a stock Intel CPU. Okay, so what you do is you place this bracket over those holes and then you slide those in one, two, three, four, going diagonal. But I did notice that in order to change this, you can't just lift it up and out, and you really can't get those out either. So, what you're supposed to do is kind of take it up one at a time. I did, after having done this a couple of times, I realized the best thing to do is to take duct tape and cover these holes with duct tape. Because if not, what happens is when you finally get it to come up, sometimes it comes up real quick, and these pieces just go flying. And losing one of those is terrible. So the best thing to do is to tape it over with some duct tape and kind of seal it off. And then pull it up, pull it up, you know, one, two, three, four, and then uh, lift it up and out. And then and this here is where the uh, cooler clips onto. So uh, yeah, that's how the Antec A30 is installed. I'll uh, come back when the new CPU is in with another update. Thanks for watching.